Welcome back, everybody, to the Minnesota Twins franchise on MLB The Show 18. Today, we're going to play some interleague baseball with the Twins taking on the Chicago Cubs. Both teams are in first place of their divisions, but the Cubs recently have not played their best baseball. They've lost three in a row and seven of their last ten games. It's always nice to see us play some different teams every now and then, and you won't see this team play in Wrigley very often. So today it's a two-game series. We have the young Yadier Alvarez on the mound in one game, and Dallas Keuchel in the other. So far, many of our players are doing well in the All-Star voting, including Paul Goldschmidt, Charlie Blackman, and of course Dallas Keuchel. We're almost 1-4 through this season, and it's been a great success to this point. Our numbers are right here. The pitching is a little underwhelming, but the hitting has more than made up for it. But how about when we play against teams like Chicago? Will our pitching be further exposed? And will better pitchers have more success against our lineup? Let's get into the first game we have. Jake Arrieta versus Yadier Alvarez. We get the dominant top of the rotation pitcher against Alvarez who's trying to prove what he can do. So top of the first, Charlie Blackman's hitting has definitely improved as of late, but he starts the day with a long at bat and is not happy with this strike three call. Here is how the lineup looks these days with all the injuries we have dealt with. Mitch Garver, Jorge Polanco, and Zach Granite, all everyday starters because of injury. In the two spot, Josh Harrison gets hit. And I feel like we've had so many hit by pitches early in this season. Here's Paul Goldschmidt hitting near 350. 2 Harrison takes off, and here's a drive from Goldschmidt to the right center gap. That one is down, and here comes Harrison around third. We get to Arietta early, 1-0 Minnesota. Good effort out here by Jason Hayward as Goldschmidt drives in another RBI. He continues to lead this team. With a man on second, base hit up the middle. Miguel Sano comes through, and here comes Goldschmidt, making it a 2-0 game for Minnesota. Always nice to give your young pitcher a lead in the first inning. And that's what the Twins do here as Polanco is the second batter to be hit. Rough first inning for Jake Arrieta. And it's getting even worse. Byron Buxton out to center field. Showing the power that's made him one of our top RBI producers to begin this season. It's home run number six. And I'm not even counting on power from Buxton. But if we can get it, it's all extra. What a start for Minnesota, 5-0 as they turn it to Alvarez in the bottom of the frame. His last start didn't go great, but I've been really happy with his play so far this season. There is a pop-up to Goldschmidt by Baez, and that's caught. I want to see more outs like that because we tend to see a lot of fly balls off of Alvarez. And here's one from Rizzo, driven deep to center. The deepest part of the yard cannot contain it, and that's a homer. Just because we're up five does not mean this game is over. The Cubs have a great lineup. Everyone knows that. And there is one on the board. Bottom of the second inning. Now Chris Bryant as Alvarez finds the outside corner. And then Bryant hits down first baseline. And that's going to slowly roll its way into the outfield, allowing Bryant to get into second base pretty easily. That brings up one of their big free agent signings. George Springer to the right side. Base hit. And Blackman holds Rizzo at third base, but some more trouble here for Yadier Alvarez. Runners at the corners, fly ball deep to right. And Blackman is there, pretty easy ball to tag up on, so the Cubs make it 5-2. As they slowly chip away, I knew I wanted more runs. Man on first, and Jorge Polanco with an 11-game hitting streak. And this will not extend things as he grounds into a routine double play. Bottom three then for Alvarez. Leading off is Jason Hayward hitting one deep the other way. Zach Granite's out there with great speed. Tracks it down near the wall. I guess I had never really noticed how weird the foul territory is over there, but we'll revisit that at a later point in the video. Full count here, Javier Baez pops up to Paul Goldschmidt. Again, you saw there that was a full count. They did make Alvarez use a lot of pitches in many of these at-bats. Here's Rizzo, who homered earlier, up the middle and behind second base. The play is made, and Alvarez finally gets his scoreless half inning. We'll go to the top of the fourth inning now, and this is Zach Granite. And he'll put this in the air out to left, drifting foul. And it's at that point I realized you could actually hit one foul down that line. 
Oh, two count. Here's Granite once again going to shallow left. This one's out of reach and falls in for a base hit. Granite now becomes the everyday left fielder, and he has very good speed, something the rest of this lineup lacks at times. We just bunt him over with Alvarez, and then Charlie Blackman turns on a pitch into right field. Granite will not test the throw. Not a good time to do it there. Especially with Josh Harrison up because he can drive one to center and bring home Granite to make it 6-2 Minnesota. Blackman's not content with second base. He takes third in the process. And then you get Paul Goldschmidt in the air to right field. That one playable for Hayward. He makes the catch, but the Twins are back to a four-run lead. Chris Bryant bottom four, and this one's hit a ton, but definitely foul. He makes Alvarez throw a bunch of pitches in this at bat as the count is full. Another payoff pitch, and Bryant swings through a 93-mile-per-hour fastball. And that was a rare strikeout in this game for Yadier Alvarez. 2-2 count to George Springer, and there is a good stop by the leg of Alvarez. He recovers, he's all good, and that is the final out as he gets through another scoreless half inning. Meanwhile, for Arietta, he was at 70 pitches to this point, but did get some key double plays to extend his time in this game. I was hoping we could take him out very early, but he did get through some of these innings rather quickly. Bottom five, pulled to first and just foul as Alvarez gets ahead. Can't get the call upstairs, then the count works full, and Cabrera through the right side, base hit for Chicago. Tough to get one, two, three innings against this lineup. With a runner on first base, base hit sharply up the middle. And the Cubs have something here with two on and just one down going back to the top of their order. Here is Javier Baez with two away, fastball on the outside. Then a changeup low. He gets ahead and Alvarez strikes him out on three nasty pitches to close the fifth inning. Great job. In the sixth, we see the bullpens become part of the game. Here is Mike Montgomery entering for Jake Arrieta, and Buxton takes him down the line, and for most, this would be a single, but Byron Buxton wants two. Buxton, head first slide ahead of the tag. Watch this once again. The left fielder gets the baseball before Buxton even gets to first base, and yet he legs this out. There is a very short list of players that can make this play happen right here, and Buxton is on that list. So, we get Zach Granite in position then to bunt, and he's going to move Buxton over to third base. We just want one extra run. Joe Mauer's up now. Base hit up the middle in Joe Mauer fashion, and the Twins take a 7-2 lead here in the sixth. Alvarez was pitching well, but there I did take him out to have Joe Mauer hit. I thought it was more valuable to go try to get one more run than one more inning of Alvarez pitching, and we get the run. So up five now against Chicago. We do a good job in the sixth inning. Then in the seventh, Goldschmidt wants a couple more on the board. Going back to the wall. And this one somehow does not get out of here. Bottom seven, we have Tyler Duffy still in the game, who had a very quick sixth inning. And starts strong here in the seventh with a grounder to Harrison. Then Cabrera right side, and that is on the first base. Two innings of work there for Duffy on just 14, 15 pitches. Bottom eight, more of the same. The Cubs just can't get anything hit hard. Jason Hayward can't even hit the ball here as he gets struck out by Fernando Abad. Bottom nine, we go Tom Wilhelmson, who's really struggling this season but he puts down the Cubs in order, and the Twins win game one. It was pretty much over from the beginning after a five-run first inning. We scored runs in a few different ways, and I thought we did an excellent job. Yadier Alvarez might have had some trouble early on, but he gave us five solid innings. He probably could have gone longer, and he only had two strikeouts in this game. What impresses me here is that so many balls were hit in play, yet he was so productive. Normally, the strikeouts are what keeps his game from getting out of control. So you can see the growth for him as a player. In the second, we get Kyle Hendricks versus Dallas Keuchel. And this is a hard hit line drive in the deep center field as Paul Goldschmidt is out. And the Twins can't get on the board here in the first. How about Dallas Keuchel? We saw him throw the no-hitter last episode against the Angels. Our second no-hitter of the season. Good start here as Hayward goes down looking. 
Then Baez swinging, two strikeouts to open. Anthony Rizzo, who homered in the first inning of game one, can't hit the slider. 0-2 count. Keuchel not wasting any time as he strikes out the side. Another dominant start. Meanwhile, Hendricks wasn't doing bad himself. Here's Polanco with two away. Some trouble at second base, but Baez recovers to make the throw in time. After a 12-pitch first for Keuchel, he goes right back to work. Nailing the strike zone with ease, and there's another strikeout. Four to start the day. How about Chris Bryant? Can he break the streak? Well, he falls behind and chases a fastball upstairs. Five strikeouts for Dallas Keuchel. It's George Springer next, and he is the one who eventually does not strike out, although I'm not sure a pop-up behind second base is a whole lot better. Pretty silent offense to start this game until the 200-hitting Byron Buxton comes through to generate some excitement. There's a base hit, and once he gets on base, it's time to run. Dallas Keuchel just stands in and watches Buxton take second base. And from there, we just want to keep advancing him 90 feet at a time. Another bunt, and a good one as Buxton advances. And now the Twins need that base hit. We played some small ball back in the first game. We try to do it here with Charlie Blackman. First pitch swinging, lined into right, and caught by Jason Hayward. Hendricks scoreless through three and just one hit allowed. Bottom three for Dallas Keuchel. Here is a line drive over second base, getting the first hit on the day for Chicago. As Drupal Cabrera up next, 1-0 from Keuchel through the right side, gets past Josh Harrison. Two aboard now for the Cubs with Kyle Hendricks batting. He's actually hitting 214 this year, but of course decides the bunt. And we probably could have gone to second base here and potentially gotten a double play. Well, that's not normally what I'm looking for in that situation. Luckily, we get a pop-up from Jason Hayward. So now it's just, can we get the final out with two in scoring position? First pitch to Javier Baez is past short and into left. One run scores. Relay throw home. Not in time. The Cubs score first. Two run single for Javier Baez. He came in with the second highest batting average on the team. Here is our two hitter getting a base hit through the right side. There's Josh Harrison. Average climbing now closer to 260. Miguel Sano next, and everyone pitches him low because that's what they want. Routine double plays that get you out of the inning. Hendricks was pitching very well and did not use many pitches in those first four innings. With a 2-0 deficit now, Keuchel trying to keep it that way as he registers another strikeout. And with two down, nails the inside corner. Before going back outside with the changeup and Contreras looks at another strike three. That's all nice, but how about the offense held to just two hits to this point? Zach Granite, two hopper to short, and some trouble over there by Cabrera. So we get the error, and with two down, a pitch in the dirt gets away from Contreras, and here's Granite, who might have gotten thrown out with a better throw. So some defensive miscues here for the Cubs, as Buxton can't hit the changeup with a 2-0 count. And as it works full, there's the fastball from Hendricks to get them out of the inning. Five shutout frames as we go to the bottom portion. Dallas Keuchel doing a pretty good job despite the two runs allowed. Jason Hayward will strike out yet again. In the sixth inning, Hendricks had just crossed the 50-pitch mark as we get a ground ball through the left side from Charlie Blackman trying to get any kind of offense going. That was just our third hit. And then another base runner as Josh Harrison is hit by the pitch. I'm telling you, we got to be hit by more pitches than any other team. Paul Goldschmidt with two on and one down. 0-1 count and then a sinker hits the outside corner. Goldschmidt lines one to right. Hayward retreats and makes the catch. We'll tag up and advance the runner, but now it's runners at the corners for Miguel Sano, who has grounded out twice already in this game. He falls behind quickly. And then fouls off the sinker. One, two. Got him with that low changeup. If you can locate off-speed pitches against Miguel Sano, you're going to have a lot of success. Meanwhile, I thought Keuchel was having a great day as well. Nice job over here by Sano getting Rizzo out. 
Next up, the cleanup hitter, Kyle Schwarber. We haven't talked about him often in this episode, as he strikes out rather quickly, chasing that slider well outside the zone. Keiko was doing so well, and it was a shame we couldn't get him the run support he needed. Almost got through the seventh here pretty easily, and I thought that if we had gotten that out right there, maybe we could go eight innings with him, but then two hits on the board against him with two down. Started thinking about taking him out of the game, but we let him stay in to try and end the inning. 2-1 count and a foul. Pitch 89, grounded right side right at Goldschmidt, and that is seven solid innings of work for Dallas Keuchel, but it doesn't mean much if we can't get on the scoreboard. So here we go, Byron Buxton on to second base. Routine play and an easy out here as Hendricks continues. Pitch count not a problem to this point, especially with all these quick outs. Joe Mauer chasing now, and it's two away from Minnesota. We're down to our final four outs. Blackman, 1-0 count on the ground. He gave us pitches I thought we could work with. We just didn't hit the ball well in this game. We go bottom eight, just trying to keep it to nothing. Anthony Rizzo to deep second base. There's Harrison. And let's go on to the ninth. Our last chance to get anything going in this two-game series. It's Josh Harrison to lead off. One, two count. Grounded right side routinely. And Baez makes the play to first base. Then we get Paul Goldschmidt. One, one count and a pitch hung up by Hendricks. And all Goldschmidt does is put it on the ground. It just didn't seem to be our day. 2-2 two, two count to Miguel Sano, and this one jams him. It's going down the line, and it falls in. There you go, the Twins' fourth hit of the day. So we'll bring in Nelson Cruz now to pinch hit and hope for a home run that ties this thing up. 1-0 count. Grounder to third base, and Bryant can't handle it. So another hit for Minnesota. They get two with two down. Things are suddenly getting interesting. Here's Jorge Polanco. Pitch left up. In the air to left. And this ball is caught by Schwarber. Game over. And a great complete game for Kyle Hendricks as the Twins offense is silenced. Fun series though. Just a two game set here in Chicago and we end up splitting it. Our pitchers did a really good job. The Chicago lineup came in on a cold streak and we just extended it. But I had to see this team play against another team with an excellent record that leads their division. Dallas Keuchel does get his first loss of the season right there. At this point, we go back home to take on Cleveland, who is second in our division, of course. And we end up building up our lead by sweeping all three games. Here was the 14-3 outing with 22 hits, including two homers for Polanco, a homer for Goldschmidt, and one for Harrison. Maxwell Fowler gets his fifth win of the season. Harrison homers again alongside Nelson Cruz in the final game of the series to complete the sweep. Jose Barrios gets the win. After that, it's back on the road, now to the south side of Chicago, and the White Sox end up taking this series from us. They get the upset victory. This time, they got some good offense off of Yadier Alvarez. This was the 9-0 game, though, that we did win, with Dallas Keuchel going all nine innings and improving to 5-1. Next time we could play at Seattle or at Pittsburgh, what would you like to see for next episode? Another thing to keep in mind is that we're about three weeks in the season from the draft, so I want to start going through some of my favorite prospects, and I'm pretty excited for this draft because I think we've shored up so many holes on this roster, we can start building some depth at different areas that I haven't been able to address yet, and one of those areas is outfield depth. I don't feel like our outfield situation in our minor league system is all that great right now, and I want some higher potential hitters that can develop over a few years. So I might go after some really young players this year who could be a long ways out from their major league careers, because I feel like our team right now is set for the short term with the veteran signings that we had. Also, with all the money we spent on veterans, we could now use some younger players to develop for the future. The Twins are now 27-15, three games ahead of the Indians in the Central. We're in very good shape and have one of the best records in the majors. The Nationals do have a better record than us, and so do the San Francisco Giants, who are 30-13. The wildcard races this year, I think, are going to be pretty intense. We're now just over a quarter of the way through this season, so here are the stats. A lot of hot streaks on this team. I love seeing that. Paul Goldschmidt, 35 RBIs, but Byron Buxton with 29. That is so impressive to me. 
We have a lot of high averages this year on the team. Nelson Cruz is doing really well. We have Maxwell Fowler, who has quickly become, I think, the second best pitcher in our rotation. Dallas Keuchel, easily number one, and he is actually in Cy Young consideration right now in this young season. Down at AAA, how about Angel Vielma? I called him up from AA, and he's doing really well. I'd like to see him become one of our depth infielders for the future because his defense is so good. And we've seen it when we've gone down to watch him play in the minors. Let me know what you'd like to see for next episode here in the Minnesota Twins franchise. I hope you all are enjoying the series. I am enjoying this season most definitely given the success that we're having, all the exciting talent that we have, and the fact that I like this new episode format where I focus on two to three games of a series. I might do a bit more two game episodes because the three game episodes can get a little bit longer to record and put together. But you can let me know what you are enjoying about the series and what you'd like to see improve. The last thing I want to close with is a look at the current MVP in Cy Young Award races. We're still very early, but it's awesome to see players on our team actually a part of the conversation. So with that, thank you all for watching. This episode is now complete. Please smash that like button if you are enjoying the series. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell next to the subscribe button and you'll get notifications when my videos are posted if that is what you would like. Leave your feedback down below in the comments and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.